I've never eaten lobster before, and there's two reasons for that. I grew up in a completely kosher home, and in Judaism, you can't eat any shellfish. So lobsters are a no-no. <laughs> but also, as I became older, I became a vegetarian, and I'm sorry, I just can't get on board with the whole boiling alive thing. <laughs> so I don't plan on eating any lobster in my lifetime, but I still really admire their beauty. I mean, come on, they're gorgeous. You don't think so? <laughs> The intricate, beautiful shell, all that detailing and that vivid, bright red, oh, it is a sculptor's dream. So when I received an order for a lobster that was going to be sitting on top of a lighthouse scene, I was like, this is right up my alley, let's go. I can't wait. <laughs> my name's Melissa and I'm an artist. I create cakes, sculptures, and a lot of other cool things. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I sculpted this lobster made out of cake. In the next video, you can see me make the lighthouse that accompanies the lobster. <laughs> so let's get right to it and let's make this cake. It didn't matter how much cake was actually in this lobster. This was more the accessory piece, the beauty piece that was going on top of this lighthouse scene on a cliff. And I mean, a lobster doesn't have that much room for cake in his little shell of a body. <laughs> As I started just sculpting out the body in Funfetti cake, it kind of looked like a fish to begin with. <laughs> or maybe like a little whale I kind of saw. <laughs> After carving out the body, I just gave it a quick layer of chocolate ganache to seal it and give me that surface to sculpt on top of. And now the fun begins, sculpting all of that detail on this lobster out of modeling chocolate. The tail has so many beautiful overlapping folds, that was my favorite part to sculpt. The front of the shell has a nice solid base with a little bit of detailing, that's more painting that's going to come in there to bring that out. And then I had a lot of fun with all of that little intricate detailing in the face. Making sure to get the little beady eyes, and then all those little antennas are going to be sticking out in the front by his mouth. I just used two pieces of wire to create those two giant antennas that stick out way past the front of his body. The antennas are really, really long, but I couldn't make them as long as they are in actual real life because they go like almost the same length as the body. So I shortened them a little bit, you know, artist interpretation. <laughs> I've never eaten a lobster tail, but I have eaten the pastry that is called a lobster tail. It has a much more uh, Italian name, like Sfigoletta. I can't really pronounce it, but I'll write it down over here. I interned at the Cake Boss in 2010 for a summer, and I was filling those lobster tails when I was working there, and I was eating them on the side, and they were absolutely delicious. They mm. perfected them, and it became one of my favorite pastries to eat. I sculpted the claws out of tin foil and then covered them in modeling chocolate. They didn't need to be actual cake because, as you'll see in the next video, there was a ton of cake on this cake. <laughs> to paint the lobster, I used powdered food colors mixed with a high-grade alcohol like vodka and just painted it right on. And what was so fun is that this lobster got to make it super vibrant, super red with yellow and orange tones. So first I laid on the shading. Each section of the shell kind of had a little bit of an ombre effect from light to dark. So I added all that on first. I used the tip of my brush to create red dots all over the surface of the shell. If you look closely at a lobster shell, you'll see it has millions, thousands of little dots all over it. And that really helps to enhance that red color and that shading. So you'll see me adding just tons of red dots all over the place. And that helped to make it look super realistic. I really only used yellows, orange, and red colors on this lobster, except for his eyes, of course, which are super black. It just amazes me that something like a work of art, a lobster shell, is just a work of art that just grows organically in nature. Especially in the ocean, like if you ever go snorkeling or scuba diving, the amount of colors that you find under there. It's just unbelievable to me that all of this beautiful vivid color is living underneath that vast blue ocean. <laughs> My favorite part of the lobster is the fan. They call it the fan on the back of the tail. It literally looks kind of like a fan that you could take it and just wave it to cool yourself down. It has this like straw-like material that comes off at the end of it. I feel like that's like a sensory thing that it uses to feel things around. You know, it's like a lighter tan color. Also at the end of the shell, right before the tail, it, it has it as well. They remind me of like whale's teeth. Like they look like straw and there's like millions of them. <laughs> Once the lobster painting was done, I gave it a light brush of confectioner's glaze all around because lobsters are really shiny and they're wet and they glisten. <laughs> And with that, the lobster was done. I would say he looked more like a cooked lobster, like once you cook it, it becomes super red. That's the vibe I was going for. 
but I thought it looked super, super realistic and every shot was just so beautiful. I really focused in on what makes the lobster a lobster, the specific details, the folds on the shell, the coloring, the dots, every little section and fold on the antennas and the legs. And I just absolutely loved how the lobster turned out. And once you see it on the lighthouse in the next video, I think it really blows your mind because it just pops. <laughs> Animals are one of my favorite subjects to sculpt, and I think that really comes through here in the lobster. I wonder, if I were to leave this lobster on a plate on the middle of a table, would you be fooled? Uh -huh. What other animal would you like to see me sculpt? Comment below, because you never know, I just might create it. If you enjoyed watching me create this lobster, please give this video a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe for many more videos to come. If you'd like to see the full process of me creating this lobster, you can check out my Patreon linked below. Thank you so, so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.